So in this question, we have a spherical weather balloon that's filled with hydrogen and it is immersed in air. And part A wants us to find the buoyant force that is acting on the balloon. Now we know that the buoyant force is going to be the density of the fluid times the volume of fluid times g, but we want to be careful about what we mean by those first two terms. The density of the fluid is not the fluid inside the balloon, but rather the fluid that envelops the balloon. So the balloon, as mentioned, is immersed in air, and therefore we want to make sure that we use the density of air when using this calculation. And then for the volume of fluid, well, it's actually the volume of the displaced fluid. So you can imagine that this balloon is completely immersed in the air. It's not as though a part of the balloon is sticking above the air or anything like that. So since the balloon is completely immersed in the air, that means that the volume of air displaced is the same as the volume of the balloon. So it's important to understand that we're going to be using the volume of the balloon in this calculation. And the balloon is a sphere. So we're going to actually take the volume term and replace it with the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds times pi times radius cubed. So this is our setup. And the question gives us the density of the air. It's this value right here. And then it also gives us the radius of the balloon. And then little g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. And when you simplify that, you will get a buoyant force of approximately 1,430 newtons. Your homework system may request kilonewtons, so we can set up a conversion in which one kilonewton is equivalent to 1,000 newtons. We multiply that, the newtons cancel, and we work that out to be 1.43 kilonewtons. So this is the final answer to part A of the question. In part B, the question asks for the net force acting on the balloon. Well, let's take a look at this fancy balloon over here. We have the buoyant force, which is pressing up on the balloon. And we've already calculated that magnitude. And then the only other force acting on the balloon is the downward gravitational force, which is mg. We will assign positive for the upward direction, negative for the downward direction. And therefore, the net force can be expressed as the sum of those two forces. So we will add b and negative mg. Notice the negative on mg again because it's downward. So really that's just the buoyant force minus mg. We know the buoyant force and then we know the mass. The mass was given as 15 kilograms. g is 9.8. So let's plug everything in. And when you simplify that, we'll have to swing over here, you will see that the net force is a positive 1,280 newtons because it's positive. That means the net force is upward. So if your homework system requires you to signify the direction, it would be upward. And then we can multiply that by 1 over 1,000, as we did earlier, to get 1.28 kilonewtons as the final answer for part B. And then at last, part C says, why does the radius of the balloon increase as it rises to a higher altitude? Well, ask yourself, what happens to the atmospheric pressure that's exerted on the balloon from the outside as the altitude increases. Well, we probably all know that as altitude increases, that pressure that's being exerted on the balloon decreases. So since the atmospheric pressure decreases, the balloon can expand outward and thereby increase its radius.